We got what you need. But you say it's just to shoot. You say it's just to shoot. Oh, baby, you. <laughs> That's right. It is just a shoot. Uh, we are the Shoot Brothers. I am, of course, Mike the Shoot Shepherd. That's Cam Bismarcky Osborne. Pew, pew, oh, pew, 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 pew. And here we are. Uh, love is in the air, they say. Mm-hmm. We got V Day on Sunday, Valentine's Day, uh, followed by Family Day here in Canada, this bonus holiday. I guess it's a real holiday. And it's only even certain provinces within. Hello, I'm Cameron Osborne. That's my voice. This is what I sound like. I think it's also only like, yeah, like uh, the territories don't celebrate it or they celebrate something else at a different time or something like that. It's like a week later they have like, I don't know, indigenous proper day. It's called something different (laughs) in, uh, I think like in Manitoba, it's called Louis Riel Day. or I don't know. Who knows? They just have to, like why? I don't know. Whatever. But, I mean, that's great because that means you can stay up late. uh, It's a holiday. And watch. Sunday night wrestling. Exactly. (laughs) With with nothing to do the next day. That's exactly it. Uh, Yeah. yeah, And if if you're in a relationship, it's Valentine's Day. It's a perfect date night. Yep. <laughs> watch you some wrestling. Put, put your loved one to bed, and then you watch Vengeance Day, baby. <laughs> so that's all coming up a little bit later. Let's get right into the action of the show. Uh, hey, let's kick off with the Tweet of the Week. It's the Tweet of the Week. It's the Tweet of the Week. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, new Tweet of the Week champion dethroning Kenny Omega, which is something not many people can do these days. <laughs> uh, certainly, you know, re- take a title away from Kenny Omega, but this person seemed to do it when, uh, fairly easily uh, with new two-time champion Ricochet. Now, different reasons. <laughs> of course, Mike, I was talking to you about earlier in the week, both him and Casey Catanzaro are taking flack for the right reasons. Um, yeah. Walking around, you know, Partying, Flap, no flapping the you know what, you know, clubbing. doing all that stuff, and just living and in your face about it too. Just like, living. Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> it is wild to see some of these things though, uh, and like there's places in the United States where like this is allowed to happen. Isn't that the crazier part? Like that's yeah. the crazier part. Not that people oh, yeah. do it, but like, wait, you can still go to a bar in Florida. It's just, like crowded. What? And just, you can yeah, still no go masks, to a crowded no bar. Or my favorite is like a super crowded bar, but like some people are wearing masks. That's my personal favorite. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. uh, this week's two league champion Ricochet going out. Um, of course, uh, we don't see Ricochet too often. On you know, I mean, we'd be probably hard pressed to even remember that he's on Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Um, but a fan reached out to him saying, "Another week." Another uh, Ricochet-less Monday Night Raw. All I want in life is a Ricochet main event run. Imagine that, what that would be like. And he responds to this fan. I guess it would be so fun if a fan resp- or if, you know, a wrestler responds to you <laughs> as a fan. And he responds by saying, what do you mean? I'm on main event every week. Uh, uh, main event and uh, Ricochet and Tucky are the, uh, are the two boys who have sort of been working that show, um, which I feel like they should just call the Natalia Hour at this point. Um, yeah, they should change the name because it's very misleading. <laughs> it has a really bad rap to it. Like it used to be called Superstars, which is good enough, right? Mm-hmm, Superstars. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Superstar. <laughs> but yeah, just main event, and we know. Yeah, it, it, we just need, we need to freshen it up. But uh, but there you go. Um, Ricochet, two-time Tweet of the Week champion. All right. Yeah. Good one. Good okay. one, Ricochet. Well, let's get into the week, <laughs> shall we? Because uh, I guess this is our, you know, I mean, we did have the Rumble last or last weekend, the weekend before last or whatever it was, but this would actually yeah. be our Fallout show uh, for SmackDown Live. Okay, folks, it's Friday night. It's time for SmackDown Live. It, uh, it used to be on Tuesday, but then uh, I think it was on Friday before, though. No, no, wait, we used to film it on a Thursday and then release it. It's just SmackDown Live. Technically, yes, that is right. Uh, that's where at least one of the Rumble winners presides mm-hmm. and Miss Bianca Belair. But uh, we all know whose show this is. This is the chief, the tribe. Uh, he comes out with Heyman and Jey Uso, who is now back. So it must have just been a little something that... Which was cool. I think we talked about last week just having kind of a, I mean, it wasn't quite a clean match, you know, between KO and Roman. But yeah, we didn't need Jey Uso there to add any more destruction. Yeah, it was better off for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, yeah, Roman starts talking about the Rumble winner Edge and 
he says, sell me. Sell me on why I should allow you onto my island of relevancy. And speaking of, where is that man? And Edge doesn't come out, so Rain just gets all pissed off. And, you know, he thinks he's playing games with him. But Edge is going to come out later on his time. It's called Edge time. <laughs> uh, Dominic facing Corbin. This little feud continues. Mm, uh, I think three yeah. weeks in now. Three weeks in. Rey Mysterio is just there hanging around, you know. Yeah, the third week of a Baron Corbin feud is really where I believe it starts to really take off. <laughs> uh, oh. so, so we get that match between these two guys. Yeah, so basically what happens is Rey Mysterio crawls under the ring, comes out the other side so he can grab Corbin by the leg, keeping him stuck there, which allows Dominic to hit the 619. Frog Splash gets the win. So finally, he conquers the the Corbin. Didn't we look into it last week, like the last time Dominic Mysterio got a singles no, it was Rey Mysterio getting a singles win. Yeah, the Mysterio family has just been taking losses yeah. for the last foreseeable Where's months. Aaliyah? Did her and Murphy just all open right Where's away? Murphy? <laughs> they just I mean, ran that off. Be, that should be the real question. Where's the professional wrestler? Not where's the professional wrestler's daughter we used for a month? The storyline turned real. They just fell in love. Maybe said, they had, it, could, this? it could have happened. It could have happened. That's um, how Triple H and Stephanie got. Yeah. First started as a storyline, then it became real. And it became real, and now true <laughs> true love on Valentine's Day, St. Vengeance Day. Yeah. But anyways, let's go to some true wrestling, because uh, when you put these guys in the ring, that's what you'll get. We got Daniel Bryan taking on Cesaro, and uh, I don't even know what happened, but early on in the match, Cesaro somehow just gets his head sliced open. Yeah, I yeah. also didn't catch this. I felt like we sort of like came back from commercial or something, and... Uh... Yeah, there was no like big turnbuckle spot or i don't mm. know either way that big bald head makes the blood look good just yeah. <laughs> dripping down uh anyways cesaro fights through the pain just showing off his tremendous power moves uh does the huge big swing into the sharpshooter and he gets a tap out from brian that's a huge win for cesaro. huge very surprising submission victory there yeah, um, commentary was putting it over too. That's that was I was I was actually just going to say that I, that was the biggest thing. My biggest takeaway from this match was that they were really putting over this recent uh, little run for Cesaro. I mean, I hope it means something because uh, that'd be great. Yeah, Cesaro push. I'd be all for that. The Cesaro push and just fucking <laughs> Daniel Bryan, who's so such a pro. So selfless, he'll put over anyone. The most selfless right professional wrestler out in the you know out on the market right now, but still dangerous enough to win any match at any time. Daniel Bryan also having a string of good matches here, where he's been given a lot of time on SmackDown. Yeah, he's basically uh, doing now what AJ Styles was doing a couple years ago. AJ Styles is still doing. It. I mean, he's doing it, but it's still on Raw mostly. That. Yeah, he shows up, but. Uh, yeah, even at the end, Cesaro goes over, gives Brian the little fist bump. So, like his buddy Nakamura, maybe they're both turning babyface. Which, hey, why not? Everyone, everyone's a babyface. We need Roman needs a line of opponents. So. Yeah, it just needs to be a lineup. He needs to he needs to just <laughs> gauntlet them all down. And yeah. uh, you know. it's like the kid at the arcade. You pay your quarter, you next up, and he just beats you all down <laughs> on Street Fighter. On Street Fighter Two. <laughs> uh, but we get some woman's action here. Bailey taking on Ruby Riot. Uh, Billy Kay still hanging around on mm -hmm. commentary. She got her headshots. Still trying to get into the Riot Squad. Uh, but Ruby and Bailey have a pretty good match. Bailey's got Ruby in a submission. So Billy tries to storm the ring, and everyone just yells at her. And then Ruby rolls up Bailey, but then Bailey reverses it, hits her finisher, which I still don't know the name of that one. That like headlock driver thing she does. Yeah, another do Anyways. I. Well, you're usually good at uh, making up the names too. Yeah, uh, I'll just call it the headlock driver. Yeah, but but, but 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 you should stylize it like headlock drive her. You know, like ah, you know. there you go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there you go, Vince. That's a free shirt. Uh, well, Billy's impressed on her way out. She gives her resume to Bailey. Billy and Bailey. That's got a ring to it. Yeah, a little Airbnb action. <laughs> uh, yeah, a yeah, little overbooked, and uh, you, you kind of want Billy Kay to settle down these days, you know? Yeah, and I just wish better for the Riot Squad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, but the Royal Rumble winner, Bianca Belair, comes out, cuts a nice promo about the big life-changing victory. And I don't know, at some point they show the her footage of her parents celebrating. It was pretty funny. 
Mm-hmm. Her dad's like jumping up on the table. And <laughs> mom just like, my baby did it. <laughs> my baby. <laughs> Great moment. Uh, so she's teasing like she's going to announce her decision. But before she can say it, Reginald comes out and he thinks that she should go after Asuka because, you know, she can't beat Sasha. She can't even beat Carmella. And speaking of, Mella comes out, says, hi, you know, I've beaten Sasha. So then Sasha Banks herself comes out. She cuts a promo, puts over Bel Air because she knows she's legit. She's the strongest. She's the fastest. But the best? Oh, don't think so. Uh, so she, she just warns Bianca, if you're going to choose me, choose me. Because uh, you have it all, but you don't got this. And then she holds up the belt. But before Bel Air can reply, Reginald interrupts. So Bianca just whips the shit out of him with her hair. And I think that was it. <laughs> I mean, hey, if she's going after this belt, I guess the worst thing that can happen is that it's a triple threat. We do have, I guess, two more pay-per-views before Mania. I think we have the yeah. Chamber and then probably Fastlane. Yeah, and I'm assuming... I feel like the SmackDown women's belt might be in the Chamber. Yeah. Because Raw gets the men's Yeah, belt. They're, they're each going to get one kind of thing. So. Yeah, and I feel like they want to do one women's, one men. So who so knows? So like... yeah, so I guess maybe we have to fill that, and then maybe we can kind of leave Fastlane blank or anything. But I hope yeah. Bianca Belair <laughs> comes after... The uh, Sasha. Yeah, I feel like either way it should end with Bel Air and Sasha at WrestleMania. That's the yeah. match we want to see. I'd go with that. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Who knows? Uh, let's go on to Otis and Chad Gable taking on Bobby Roode. Is it Robert Roode? I don't know anymore. Doesn't I think it's. I think we're back to Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Otis and Gable are calling themselves something like the other name, but not quite. They're calling it like. Um, Amer- not American Alpha, but it's like close to that. Yeah, like something that incorporates Otis. Yeah, American something, like another A word. Uh, I'll I'll yeah. think of it. We'll get it. Uh, yeah, so that's tag match them uh, versus Rudin Ziggler, who you may have forgotten. They're the tag champs, but yeah. this is a non-title match. So got a couple good moves here. Gable and Ziggler looking really good. Two accomplished amateur wrestlers, but... Uh, Eventually, Rude hits the glorious DDT, gets the win. Glorious. Yeah. <laughs> That's still an entrance. Did, did the Street Profits ever get a uh, a rematch there? I think Montez is legit hurt. Okay. He's been out for a while. Yeah, because yeah. it sort of seems like they got off television and then we... You know, haven't, I think that's haven't, why they took it. the belts off them in the first place. Yeah, that could have done so it. So it's kind yeah. of for no reason. It was mm-hmm. just that random smackdown. Anyways, uh, then we get a This Day in History... When they just show off clips of the famous rematch between Hogan and Andre, uh, which is still to this day the highest viewed wrestling match in television history. 33 million viewers. Like 33 million pay-per-view buys? No, free television. Oh, okay. This was on like a Saturday night. Oh, okay. It was the rematch of Hogan from Andre and the controversial finish with the three count and Hogan's was up. Oh, Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. That was in there for fun. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> but let's go to a current title match. We got the Intercontinental title. Big E defending against Sami Zayn and Apollo Crews. And yeah, this was just a fun, good competitive bout. Crews flipping all over the place, getting some near falls. Uh, yeah, eventually Sami hits the Huluva kick on Big E, but Apollo breaks up the pin. Then he tosses Sami into the timekeeper area, goes back into the ring, and then walks right into the big ending. So Big E... Gets the win, retains his title. Yeah. Pretty good match. For me, there was a big commercial break in the middle of this match, and especially coming right after that little uh, Andre Hogan thing. I couldn't help but thinking, like, really? Like, we had to do this? You know, we we could have, you know, had this match not go through a commercial and then just have, like, a normal commercial break. So I think, you know, timing-wise, I think it could have uh, been a li- hit, hit a little stronger for me. Yeah, I mean, I liked the match, so I would have liked more of it. More from, of uh, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever was cut, mm-hmm. that's a good point. But uh, Biggie, he's keeping that belt for now. For now. Uh, Royal, Rumble, Royal Rumble winner Edge comes out to uh, cut a promo, just you know, recapping what we already know. His comeback, the decision he's got to make. But before he can say anything, Reigns comes out with his tribe, and they all get in the ring. And Edge says, oh, you're already sweating me. I'm out here alone. you got to bring your back up. So Reigns is like, all right, I got this. They leave the two guys alone. And Reigns tells him, you disrespected me and my family, so acknowledge me as the main event of WrestleMania. Say my name. But then Kevin Owens appears, 
hits a stunner on Reigns and walks out. Uh, and then Edge just stands tall to end the show. He didn't have to do anything. <laughs> he didn't have to do anything. He just kind of stood there, <laughs> just like, oh, okay, yeah. okay that was a. Uh... But uh, Kevin Owens. Getting one more shot, maybe? I don't know. I feel like we've we've done enough for now. Third time's the charm. I really think... Uh, Might even be the fourth time. <laughs> when it comes to SmackDown right now, um, I, I can't think of another like top babyface that would take him on right now. Because if there's a plan for Roman at Mania, and whether that's Edge, whether that's Daniel Bryan, whether that's Cesaro, like it's not their time now. Really? Yeah. Yeah, after we lost Ray, you know, the Ray Seth Murphy thing all went down. Uh Big E's now doing his own thing with his own title. There's really no top babyface for a while. About, for uh, a second it was Jey Uso. For a second. He was the <laughs> top babyface. <laughs> They have enough time for uh, Nakamura. Remember, like a week or two ago, he was getting a little steam. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder. I mean, I guess that's the uh, the tough part to book, right? Do you just book Kevin Owens a couple more times to lose, so we can work on something great for Mania? Like, uh, or uh, you know, you don't yeah. want Shinsuke. Like, I'm just... sure the match will be good again, but just seeing Owens lose again, I, you know, I'd yeah. rather have something. He's taking a couple that. L's in that category. It would be nice to see uh, a dub. Maybe even Sami Zayn bump Sami Zayn up for uh, sure. For the main event. Just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just a match, yeah. Just give us something, yeah. yeah. But um, that's I think that's where we're looking at our SmackDown, like the top of the card. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll have to. They still have to figure out their side of the Elimination Chamber pay per view. So we'll figure that out. Yeah, they'll figure that out. But uh, like but hey, you know, it was a fine segment and certainly uh, you know an average episode of SmackDown. We have had some bangers lately. Uh, so yeah. of course it was eventually going to cool off. Yeah, but still nothing nothing too terrible overall. Of course. Um, <laughs> but that's why we have to get the good stuff out of the way, right? Because Monday Night Raw. Let's get raw. Let's get raw. The law of averages. I, well, I'm, uh, but I guess also like... It's. I think it's that extra hour because that's an like if let's say you know if you base it on like an hour by hour basis let's say right you want to mm -hmm. go two for two but that's a little easier <laughs> than going three for three so just I think yeah just because of that extra hour there's more TV therefore it's more likely that uh, something silly is gonna happen but uh, certainly not to kick <laughs> off the show the show open oh, yeah. uh, the show opens well I guess the you know. There was a little like in memoriam type thing before for something that I didn't uh, know about. Butch Reed, I think. Yeah, I, I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know who that was or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, he's an old. He's before my time even. Yeah. Uh, but I know his name. <laughs> but, yeah, you just uh, know who he is. Yeah, but then we get past that, and uh, the authority figure Adam Pierce comes out to start the show, but he's just there to introduce us to Shane McMahon, who we have not seen in I think over a year. This is definitely it's a Thunderdome feel, debut. Um, uh, definitely a Thunderdome debut. The last time we saw him would have, of course, been hosting Raw Underground. Oh, yeah, of course. Forgot about that. Um, uh, you, how could you forget? <laughs> uh, so Shane talks about the upcoming Elimination Chamber, and he's here to make an announcement about the main event. Uh, Drew McIntyre is going to defend his WWE title inside the chamber. And the five other participants will be Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, The Miz, and Sheamus, all what, former champions. Yeah, what a what a what a what a lineup. Yeah, I mean they're all uh, pretty big names. Uh, a couple of them. I mean, some of them are you don't think they're going to win, but <laughs> yeah, a little weird. I mean, uh, I you know I always try to remember in years past. Like, did they announce? I guess we're only two weeks away, or we only have one more week. Like, we have this coming Monday, I think, and then the yeah. chamber. Yeah. So this Sunday's vengeance, and then Sunday after. So the yeah, it is coming up. Uh, so yeah, throw all these guys in the match. I guess that's the way it goes. But the Miz, what's yeah. the deal with throwing? Because that's kind of like the Miz <laughs> has a championship match opportunity while think... he has the briefcase. Like, how does that work? I mean, if the pre prerequisite was to you have to be a former champion, I haven't looked at over the whole roster. But if they're the only five men, then maybe that's why. Yeah. Okay. But there's yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they didn't have to make that step. But either way, it's the chamber. I always love a good chamber match, so it's gonna be fun. Yeah, they always are. <coughs> they always are, and uh, yeah, a lot of heavy hitters there. Yeah. 
So Shane leaves, and then AJ Styles comes out. He wants to talk to Pierce. He puts himself over until Jeff Hardy comes out because they have a match. So we just get Hardy, Styles, nothing too crazy, just a fun little TV match. Uh, Hardy sells his knee, so AJ targets it, locks in the heel hook, makes him tap out. So yeah. AJ, looking strong, didn't need out, didn't need Omos or anything. Didn't even need Omos. Wow. <laughs> uh, but that was that, and then we get some tag action. New Day taking on Slapjack and T-Bar. So Kofi is finally back in the ring officially. Mm-hmm. Uh, which this was only like a day after the Rumble, so it was kind of weird, or like a week after the Rumble. Why wasn't he in it? Yeah, why wasn't he there? I don't know. I don't know. Doesn't matter. He's in the ring. He wasn't holding back. He's doing his big giant trust falls to the floor. And, uh, eventually, him and Xavier hit the day break, get the win. And as they're celebrating, Xavier says, let me fight Reckoning. Give me Reckoning. So he wants her. I agree. Book it. Book it. It's nice to see, um, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, the New Day lost the titles. I mean, however many months ago. But it's nice to see that they're still on. They're still doing it. Yeah, you know? even when Big E's not around, they're still on good terms. Yeah, and they still get booked, like, enough. Yeah, like they, even they, when They've been Kofi on television out, every single week. Yeah, like Xavier was just wrestling singles for the past month when Kofi was out, and he was looking good, so and, they're always going to be in the hunt. And with Mustafa Ali on commentary there, um, I guess we got to get Mustafa Ali Kofi. That's a match that has to happen yeah. Uh, if we are to kind of split up into singles, there's nobody that's the same size as Dijakovic and mm-hmm. the other guy, Mace. And, you know, yeah, Kofi and Ali, they're kind of the leaders at this point. I mean, yeah, the leaders of the groups. The leaders of their respective crews. Mm-hmm. But then we get uh, 16 time world champion Ric Flair coming out with Lacey Evans and. Cutting a promo about their actions in recent weeks, and Ric Flair, he's hot with a wild with a live mic. <laughs> oh my god! But, <laughs> but it was a good, pretty good promo. A little rambling. He's an old man, but uh, you know he's tired of his daughter and woman talking trash about him, and now he's got the woman Lacey, who he's you know he sees what it's, she's got, what it takes to be a star. She just needs his wisdom, and he uh, he says this relationship is just casual, nothing more. Uh, and we're letting Asuka know we're coming for that title. Lacey's going to be the next champion. And I hope so. Uh, even if it's, you know, even if it's just for her to lose to Charlotte, I'll take it. Even if just for her <laughs> to lose. Um, yeah, it's not getting any, cr- it still feels awkward. Yeah, I mean, the whole father thing, uh, I don't know. I don't need that part of it. I'd rather it just be Lacey and Charlotte. But Because that was, uh, we never got that. At right. first, I thought it was going to be to turn Charlotte heel, but now I, I don't think that. I think it's just Lacey heel. I, I guess, to, well, yeah, I, I was to turn Lacey heel or to turn Charlotte babyface. Yeah. Because you got to agree. It's, if someone's trying to bang your dad, you got to agree <laughs> with that person, you know? I don't know. What if he's found love? Can't she be happy for him? <laughs> what if he's what, Rick Ferris found love for the 14th time, I'm sure? <laughs> he wants to match his title record with marriages. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, Charlotte finally comes out, cuts a promo on Lacey and her dirty old father. And Lacey informs Charlotte that officials have told her that if uh, she can beat Charlotte, that she's next in line for a title shot. So Charlotte says, all right, how about we do this right now? And then Evans cheap shots Charlotte, throws her into the stairs, and we get this match. So, uh, yeah, just good little back and forth. Lacey keeps using Flair as a human shield to protect herself from Charlotte. Um, and I think eventually this ends up Charlotte just gets so frustrated by Lacey continuing to do this she's pounding her in the corner she won't break at the ref's count she actually, Charlotte shoves the ref away so he's got no choice but to call for the DQ so that's it Lacey's getting the title shot Wow, she earned it, she earned it. Lacey I hope she wins um. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it, it sort of seems like. And oh, fuck. Do I? I, I started. The, I started this exact sentence by almost saying, "Wait, who is the Raw Women's Champion?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, it's Oscar hasn't had a storyline in months, and this Lacey Rick thing's been going on for so long. I That's why I feel like at know, this point, I'm... I feel like it has to culminate at WrestleMania. Lacey gets the title off Oscar just to lose it to Charlotte at WrestleMania. And WWE gets another notch on her belt. 
Hey, it's a notch on the belt <laughs> of 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 wrestling R- Mount Rushmore. I mean, like I said, if it ends, if it has to happen just so Lacey can get her title run, I'll take it. Yeah. Anything for that title run. Anything for, Lacey. for anything. You know, <laughs> like you know, anything just to fucking do something. Yeah. I mean, no matter who the match is, we all know that the A women's match is going to be Sasha Bianca at WrestleMania. Yeah, especially, you know, like you just said, so the men, the, the raw men get the rumble, oh, sorry, get the chamber, so the SmackDown women get the chamber. It sort of seems like there's a lot of, and and whatever's happening with the tag belts, it sort of seems like there's a lot of women on the raw roster just, just twiddling their thumbs. <laughs> yeah, so... I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure out this. I'm guessing it's going to be Lacey versus Asuka at the chamber mm-hmm. in a singles match. So then we'll go from there. But yeah, all those other Raw women, we'll figure it out. They need to start doing something. I mean, Naomi and Lana have a title shot coming up. So. You know, but and then but we do have, uh, and like we've been saying for weeks, let's, start, let's bring that belt down to NXT. Let's make something of it. Yeah, you know, well, we'll and get to that. With that, with, uh, you know, their tournament uh, kind of winding down. Yeah. We'll address that on Wednesday. They bring it up a little bit. Uh, but let's bring out Rated R Superstar Edge. Cut no promo. Uh, giving us another update on WrestleMania decision. But he says, you know, now that the Chamber's coming up, maybe I want to wait to see who's uh, coming out of there as champion so I can figure things out. And then The Miz comes out with uh, John Morrison and Angel Garza. Who now hey! Hey! <laughs> He's part of the group now, I guess, right? Man, just the other day, I was thinking about... I think I was just, like, walking to get groceries, thinking about the Vagabonds. Remember? Uh, on Berto Carrillo, long, <laughs> Andrade, Angel Garza. Yeah. I was like, God, it was like a blast down memory lane. I don't remember. Just sort of the thought came into my head. You know, the just summer like, oh, of the Vagabonds. The summer of the Vagabonds, baby. And now one's released, one's undrafted. And what's and the Andrade other's doing? <laughs> Yeah. He hasn't been drafted yet. He's still undrafted. Like, is he hurt? He can't be no, hurt. I think they just don't like him. They just don't like <laughs> I him. I don't know. But Charlotte, <laughs> like, but Charlotte likes him, so they have to give him a I job. I think that's why. Yeah, like, ah, he's Charlotte's boyfriend. We'll just keep him on the payroll. <laughs> wow. Uh, but anyways, Miz is like, hey, man, I know you, Ed. You're an opportunist. Uh, let's strategize. I got the money in the bank. Even if you make your grand comeback and win the title, I'll be there to cash in. And Edge is just like, man, I was the first money in the bank. I know all about that shit. I'm here to win. And he just lays into him and Mike drops and walks out. Yeah, he is, uh, you know, he is synonymous with that championship. I think, you know, you think about Edge and certainly one of the top things you're going to think about is him holding the briefcase, but not a normal briefcase, like leather bound and filled with crackers. The type of briefcase which contains a contract (laughs) for for a wrestling match. His uh, his original, the very first Money in the Bank briefcase was pretty bland, just a regular back black briefcase. Yeah, no, yeah, it wasn't. It didn't have any like. <laughs> it didn't even say anything. <laughs> no, just a black leather briefcase. I like that everyone does the briefcase. Like no one, no company. Like if there's a contract in a thing, we haven't come up with a better <laughs> container for for there to be a contract in. It's like it's yeah. like because it has to be not only convenient to carry around but easy to hang above a ring. <laughs> and it has to be like thick enough that you can beat someone down with it. Like it has to be a very sp- and just the briefcase kind of covers all those steps. Yeah, you know? someone should have like a little travel bag with wheels and just wheel yeah, it yeah, a little wheel, little wheel and bag. And I remember the well, remember the uh, the Brock party. Uh, yeah, that, was fun. that was probably the most fun th- yeah. I've seen. It somebody, only lasts like two weeks. It lasted but I two it. weeks, but it was the most fun somebody has had with that. Because <laughs> usually, I mean, the, our past money in the bank winners, it's always so fucking serious. Most of the you know, time, like yeah. it's Baron Corbin lingering around, like I'm gonna use this whatever I want, or the Miz being sneaky, like I'm gonna use this when the opportunity's right. Brock's just like, "What's up, motherfuckers?" <laughs> he was jamming. He was just yeah. jamming. Well, big smile. He's like, "Look at me!" He doesn't look smile what I often. Got. It was yeah. so fun to see when Brock Lesnar <laughs> is having fun. Oh Everyone's my god, fun. everyone loves him. The whole building. Oh, yeah. the whole building goes on. I mean, hell, we saw it happen. <laughs> we saw oh, yeah. it happen. Yeah. Uh, but then Angel Garza, he's already out here, so he has a match against Damian Priest, who's got Bad Bunny in his corner. It appears to be a regular member now of the roster. Yeah, uh, he's well, got I'm merch sh- on the shop that's like selling out like crazy and all this shit. And Apparently, he's got four of the top five spots on WWE Shop. Really? 
Well, yeah. that's what happens when we haven't seen the fiend for a month. <laughs> I think I think yeah. Bad Bunny saw, or you know, we kind of heard uh, the unanimous best celebrity appearance shooty given to Pat McAfee, and he said to himself, "Hold my beer." Yeah. Hold my cerveza. Hold my cerveza, por favor. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, this is, uh, you know, it's fun. It's great for everybody. And quite frankly, like, you know, let's say, I don't know how this meeting, this interaction started, but it's not like this guy's playing shows all over the fucking world. Um, this sort not, of seems yeah. like the best case scenario for, you know, if if you've ever, wa- if you're like an actor, um, artist, whatever, and you've ever wanted to try professional wrestling. You're you're about you're a few months late, but uh, this is the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, his uh, appearances aren't too nothing too offensive right now. So <laughs> basically, he's just there to stop Ms. Mo from cheating. So behind the ref's back. Yeah, to kind of uh, even out the two, the constant two on one that the Ms. Mo uh, yeah. goes through. Eventually, the ref catches them and just says, "Fuck you guys, you're out of here." And then Priest hits Garza with the reckoning to pick up another win. So they haven't fucked up his debut yet. So far, yeah, so far. <laughs> two weeks, two wins. But uh, but I guess they fucked up Garza because they bring him back. And he- <laughs> well, yeah, he was already kind of. I don't know. His what's his peak? Yeah, I wonder. But um, yeah, Bad Bunny and Archer and the Archer of Infamy fucking giving each other a couple they're rubs. Bros, yeah, they're bros. They're rubbing. Uh, e- they're rubbing up on each other, and that's all good. They're speaking Spanish to each other. Ole. <laughs> Uh, Riddle is taking on Keith Lee. Uh, this is just a good match. Two guys that should be the stars of your mid card. Uh, but yeah, I guess I don't know. Don't yeah. have to. Well, it's great to Hopefully. see Keith Lee come back. Uh, like we haven't seen him for what feels like a couple weeks. You know, he missed yeah. out on the Rumble. Yeah. And uh, uh, I feel like these guys, these two guys, also are two guys who have had a lot of indie matches together. I mean, there's not one that I can sort of pick out, but I'm sure you could find. Like these are guys who have worked together in the past before. They know what's up. Yeah, I'm sure they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, Riddle hits the floating bro, but Lee kicks out at two, and then he fights back, hits a spirit bomb, gets a three count. But then afterwards, Bobby Lashley attacks Lee from behind and slams him down. And then smacks him in the face with the steel steps, knocks Riddle out with the heart lock. So Lashley just stands tall, looking very strong over these two men. So, I mean, if we have to say it, is Bobby Lashley, Keith Lee, uh, the U.S. title match? Is that it? Because that that sounds like a big time match. That'd be pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's... uh, you know, I mean, Riddle's still hanging around there somehow. So maybe Riddle's still hanging around threat. there somehow. I mean, if 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 everybody can be patient in those sorts of things, like this would be the biggest mid card. This could be a huge mid card feud for WrestleMania. Yeah, no, I mean, I like it. We've been wanting this U.S. title to get some fresh stuff going on, and Keith Lee and even Riddle, if they make it a triple threat, that'd still be a great match. Why the heck not? They're all uh, they're all big fighters, you know. It all makes sense. Yeah, but the. The important thing is having these great wrestlers in the in the scene in the title hunt. Agreed. Uh, but let's go to Nia Jax taking on Lana in a tables match. What? Yeah, this is the one I wanted like two months ago. They didn't. They didn't advert. What? Tables match. What? Nia. <laughs> you would think what was supposed to be the culmination of months of build would have at least had like a. Midway through last week, they would have said, like, this Monday, Nia Jax, Lana, tables match. Even said it, like, at the beginning of the show. They didn't say this until the match was starting. Well, there was payoff. Don't you worry. Uh, <laughs> so, Nia, Lana, Shayna, and Naomi are at ringside to, you know, keep things even. But uh, Nia's just dominating early on. Hits a bunch of those one arm power bombs and... You know, poor Lana's in pain, but she fights back, hits a bunch of nice kicks. They fight outside the ring to the edge of the apron. Uh, Naya goes for a big leg drop, but Lana avoids. So Naya lands hard on her ass right on the edge of the ring. And she screams. Ah! And she's screaming in pain. She says, my hole. Her hole. Her hole, people. The hole. So she must mean her asshole. Well, there's a. It could be any number of things when you uh, hit the hit the ring apron at such a uh, you know ferocity. So this blew up the online social media. This blew world. up. 
Yeah, this my hole. They even had to go back and censor it on the YouTube. It, clip. Yeah, it didn't get. Uh, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't air it on the replay. I no, also but heard my that. feed. I heard the. I heard her. I heard saying, it. My hole. What was she? <laughs> what are you like, what thinking? Is it? Like obviously that's off the cuff. I don't think they booked her to say that, right? <laughs> Surely <laughs> they, they didn't. If censor. they booked her to say it, she wouldn't have a. Uh... Yeah. But her scream sounded genuine. It sounded like it might have been some real pain there. I think she actually, a lot of, think she actually ripped her hole. Like the the leg drop looked like it had more force. Oh, than the one by she the way, does. can we this leg? <laughs> at least when Hulk Hogan does a leg drop, he like jumps up, creating <laughs> some kind of like momentum up to then come crashing down. Naya just sort of puts a le- like extends a leg and then sits. <laughs> Gravity does the rest. It's the worst. Oh my god. Well, this one, I think she actually jumped like an inch, and that's why it hurt so much. <laughs> she jumped an inch, and that's why her hole got my split. hole. My hole. But, yeah. Uh, so that's well, that'll be a meme forever. Forever. Uh, but as she's recovering from this devastating ass damage, uh, she's she's just stumbling around outside. Lana runs up and power shoves her right into a table, through the table, against the barricade, breaks through. Lana wins. So another big win for my girl. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and as she's celebrating, Shayna tries to attack her, but Naomi protects her partner. So some great momentum here, hopefully on their way to win those tag titles. Yeah, well, I mean, Naomi, we've missed we we we've missed her. We've talked we've been talking about her for you know she comes up sparingly on the show before her big return at the Rumble, and uh, this is a great just straight up babyface team if that's the plan you know to take yeah. them off these belt you know take them off and uh, a babyface skilled team. Lana's skills are getting better, and uh, Naomi's already a fantastic performer. Yeah, and this, uh, you know, maybe they can have, like, what I want for Lacey Evans. A quick little title run and then drop the belts to NXT. <laughs> just, so, but just a little quick one, though. Just a little quick one. Yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Throw her a bone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we get a bonus match since these women are already out here. Naomi taking on Shayna Baszler. Uh, Shayna's just all over Naomi. Lana's in the corner trying to root for her friend. So Shayna goes after her, beats her up, but she takes her eyes off the prize as she goes back into the ring. Naomi rolls her up, gets a three count. The old roll so up. Double win. The old roll Both. up double win. Yeah. Huge momentum for Naomi and Lana. Naomi and Lana. I mean, I guess, It'll yeah. probably be the pre-show match at Elimination. Yeah, Channel. it sounds like pre-show, and uh, let's just fingers crossed they they take them off, you know? Yeah, let them win. Let them quick, quick, dominant win. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's go to the main event. Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. I don't really know why, you know? Because because enough. why not? That's why. This is the <laughs> WWE, Mike. Why? Because why not? Yeah, where was Alexa this show? I don't know. No, yeah, no, uh, anyway. no, no Alexa Bliss, no uh no Fiend, obviously. He's yeah. been burned. I will give him credit. They're selling that burn. He's been good. burned to death. Yeah. Fiend is taking a lot longer than Randy Orton. Um you know, <laughs> I I don't know why Randy Orton, you know, maybe he has like a little superpower. He's he his healing ability. You know, because yeah, I was, I, uh, unlike anybody else's. Well, luckily, early on the match, we don't have to watch much because Sheamus comes down, which distracts Drew, and eventually Sheamus just jumps right in and broke kicks, or he tries to hit Drew, but he avoids, and Orton gets hit, causing the DQ, and then Drew Claymore Sheamus, so Drew stands tall at the end of it all. Oh, I thought it was a uh, <clears throat> a DQ finish. Yeah. yeah oh, like, uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I sorry. Understand. Sorry. No. Sheamus kicks the guy. There's a DQ, and then Drew kicks Sheamus. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about yeah. that. But uh, but hey, you know, I mean, Drew McIntyre is not worried about this one little match right here. He's worried about all of these guys and the chamber. Exactly. The the vi- is- the the vicious structure. I love. I always <laughs> say Michael Cole always. I want to count how many times he uses the word structure. Uh, when referring to the Elimination Chamber on the day of the pay-per-view. I'm going to write that down now so I remember to count them. The structure? Yeah, because remember I did that? I wanted to do that with Tribal Chief at Clash of Champions, and then I just forgot. <laughs> yeah. um, but how many times commentary uses the word structure on, uh, on I wrote it down, on Chamber Day? Because they always like saying that. Uh, yeah, definitely. And that was uh, that was the entirety of Monday Night Raw. That was it. It was a quick show. It felt like it was a quick show. Uh, somehow on uh, this week's Monday Night Raw. I don't know. Sometimes they linger yeah. on, you know. It wasn't, yeah, there wasn't really anything that 
bad. Everything had a purpose and uh, not a single 24-7 gaggle nonsense. Well, I think uh, Rosenberg still got it over in New York. Fantastic. Let's keep it there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, keep it as sight, far away from the Thunderdome as we possibly can. Well, it's unfortunate. I would have hoped that Gronkowski still had the belt. He could have, you know, end zone celebration with touchdown Super Bowl okay. this past weekend. Uh, okay, it's possible. It's Gron- possible. It's possible. He could have pulled out the belt and then Truth rolls him up in the end zone. <laughs> and then he gets tackled then by the security. Coach is like, what the fuck are you doing? We're in the middle of a game. Gets tackled by security like the streaker. Who <laughs> jumped out there? That guy made a lot of money. Did you hear about? I that? did hear about that. He bet on st- a streaker, and then he uh, made yeah, like three hundred thousand dollars or something. I wonder if there's a clause in that, where it's like throwing the game, where it's like you bet on yourself. It's almost like you were throwing the. the you know, I mean, hey, if they're not going to let Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame for what he did, <laughs> certainly you can't honor this guy's bet. I mean, he just did yeah, the same thing. Know. Uh, we're not going to get into the Pete Rose debate. Uh, we are going to take a break, though. How's that sound? I mean, Pete Rose is a WWE Hall of Famer. Really? Yeah, what? he was appeared at multiple WrestleManias and got tombstoned by Kane. No fooling! It was great. It was a great moment. So wait, Pete Rose is in the WWE Hall of Fame, but he's not in the National Baseball <laughs> Hall of Fame? Yeah, isn't that great? Wow, isn't that crazy? 17-time yeah. All-Star, most career hits. Wow. Does it say he's in the WWE Hall of Fame on his wiki? I, uh, I'm just looking... <laughs> I'm just looking it up right now. I know I haven't gotten quite there yet, but I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure, you know. I remember he would show up. Where was he? He was from Cincinnati, Cincinnati. or something. Cincinnati. Res. Yeah. yeah. So he would be in their opposite town and be like, yeah, and you suck. Did we beat you? And everyone would boo him. And then Kane came out and tombstoned him. And oh, everyone's... yeah. Yeah, 2004 was when he uh, jumped in the hall. <laughs> there you go. Which was still then, 20 years after he stopped. It was playing. like a running gag. Three years in a row, Kane would come out and tombstone him. And everyone loved it. <laughs> everyone would pop. Yeah, well, and he was a good sport about it. Of course, you got you got to be if uh, if Kane's giving. <laughs> he you just a, wanted to get into a hall. Some he sort just of wanted hall. to be in a hall of fame in some capacities. Yeah. Like guys, like I'm fucking trying here. Come yeah. on, most hits of all time. What the fuck do I got to do? What do I have to do? I have the most yeah. singles, career at bats, games played, <laughs> three times yeah. World Baseball's Series fucked. champion. Baseball is fucked. Uh, but on it's that note, whole... should we just take a quick break? Let's take a break. Let's, Let's do, before ball. we start talking about fucking baseball, we're going to take a quick break. Yeah. We're going to come back because we have the Wednesday Night War. Of course, we have pay-per-view coming up this weekend. And little game in the middle. So stick around. Let's shoot. Yeah, let's shoot. Yeah, let's shoot. Butter, butter. Yeah, let's shoot. Yeah, let's shoot. Yeah, let's shoot. Butter, butter. Yeah. Back here with part two. To part dose, uh, this Mike, this is my chance for me to ask you my weekly question. How are our boys in blue doing, those Toronto Maple Leafs? <coughs> they are doing damn good. Top of the league, top of the division. Uh, one of eight, won eight of the last nine games, four in a row. They're just on fire. Just Matthews a- has the most goals in the league. I could go on. A couple injuries here and there, but that happens. That's hockey. That's that's hockey. It's a physical sport. Great, glad to hear that. Uh, glad to hear that our boys are um, playing as hard as they can. Certainly, uh, I like these odds, though. I guess it is a twenty five percent chance that a Canadian team is going to make it into the uh, Stanley Cup Finals. <laughs> Love those yeah. odds. I really do. I mean, and right now Montreal second in the division, and uh, there hasn't been a Montreal Toronto playoff series in decades and decades. Now, wouldn't that, so that be, be a- fun? That could be a dream for lots of people and a nightmare. <laughs> it could be a dream for some and a nightmare for stressful. others. Uh, that's yeah. right. Well, that's nice to hear that the Toronto Maple Leafs are still crushing it. Yeah. And I know the Raptors, they're pulling ahead. If what, if they win tonight, they're 500 or next game, they win their 500 tomorrow night. Um. Well, yeah, the, the, uh, the next game's this evening. We're playing this evening, Boston. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we last night we crept up to uh, 12 and 13 which yeah. uh, is good enough for sixth in the conference because uh, the Eastern Conference <laughs> is trash. Um, yeah. But that's okay. This so is we can go further once you reach 500 clean slate. We can, we can, will, and have gone further. Yes. There we go. Uh, that's certainly that's certainly the case. So it's nice <laughs> to see. And uh, keep tuned for Argo's talk when uh, well, we bring up the Toronto uh, whenever, you know, summertime, whenever that kind of comes know. around. There will be a lot more Blue Jays than Argo. Blue Jays. We got the TFC, of course. We have a lot of things to worry about here. But uh, on this show, usually what we worry about is professional wrestling. So let's get into our big second half where uh, our little second half middle segment. I thought it would be a lot of fun to bring you another edition of Would You Rather. <laughs> Would you 
Would you rather? We, yeah, we play once in a while. I think we have three, three for each other. Yes, I got three. You got three. Perfect. Who wants to leave? Well, you know, Mike, this was uh, this was your idea for this week. So how about you kick it off? All right, I'll kick it off. Ah, uh, so rather? would you rather? You have no choice. You must answer one of these things that we put forth for the other. <laughs> They can have as many outlandish stipulations as you want. Of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some more than others. But I'll start off with a simple one. You know, you and I were both fans of tattoos uh, on ourselves and others. And many wrestlers are fans of tattoos as well. So, of course, uh, you're going to have to pick between one of these two tattoos that you must get. Okay. And you have to keep it forever. No alterations, no removals. Of course. It's yours for life. Of course. So would you rather have... Uh, Alistair Black's face tattoos. So pretty small, but still face tattoos. Uh, still, it's on your fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> or Cody Rhodes' neck tattoo. Ooh. See, that's also because, like, um, you think about who they're on also so much, right? Like, <clears throat> you would think if you had Alistair Black's face tattoos, you would just be like, okay, I'm just also going to get the best of my body tattooed like <laughs> Alistair Black. <laughs> so at least then it yeah. fits. I mean, yeah, they're pretty small. You can, you know. Cody Rhodes' like fucking rooting. tattooed. It's so present. On, and his blonde <laughs> hair, his white skin. He's got a big, thick yeah. fucking neck, too. A big canvas. Anything but a turtleneck, you're going to see that thing at all times. <clears throat> and I think for that reason, I think it's pretty cool. You know, it's, it's a cool look when you're we he's wearing his suit. And he's already, you know, he's a big motherfucker. And he's wearing his suit. And you just kind of see the tip of it coming mm -hmm. off. You know, it's his brand. It's his name. It's, uh, it's who he is. I think... I would it go. It is stars and stripes, and you're not American. Well, I guess you know. I guess I'm not American. <laughs> just to throw that out just there. Just to throw that not one to, out there. Not that's to sway a good your point. Opinion. That's a good point. Not to sway your. Um, yeah. I think I'm gonna have to go with the uh, the Cody Rhodes tattoo. Cody Rhodes, yeah. I mean, it is aesthetically, it's more of a tattoo, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. Alistair Black's just like a tiny moon and a tiny upside down cross. Yeah, a couple. Which could people might start questioning you, like, what? You anti-Muslim, and then they'll smack you. Who knows? But also, in this fake scenario, I'm pretending I'm also a professional wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are who you are. This is, uh, you just have to get one of the tattoos. I am the who rest, I am. The rest of your life path, I can't decide for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Mike, I got one here for you also. So for my three, uh, I need you to assume, like, this is a life where you are a professional wrestler. So this is kind of like, I will be describing situations, and you would have to say which one you would rather have. If I was a wrestler. If you were, yeah. You're not Mike Shepard as we know you right now, you yeah, know? but I'm still me if I was a professional wrestler. You're just you, but you happen to be down there at the Thunderdome or something, you know? <laughs> okay. uh, so first one, um, Mike, would you rather have a match every week on that sweet, sweet AEW women's division time slot, you know, like 9-15? <laughs> or yeah. would you rather have a match every week where you main event AEW Dark? Uh, I think I'd rather have the woman's time spot because it's still television. Uh, and in this scenario, I'm not a woman. I'm me. You're, but you're so taking, but you're taking that glory. It's nine ten. I'm taking that nine, nine fifteen. Yeah. But I'm taking that spot and I'm making that the must see spot. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. It, it's such a hard little chunk of television to, to you know, to really bring attention to. You know. Well, I'm gonna do it. Hell yeah. That's what I'm taking. Because Dark, I mean, Dark, you can main event Dark, but it's still limited audience. Yeah, I tune in I tune in every once in a while. I tune in every once in a while. I'll just kind of... Yeah, if I hear something big happen. I'll kind of skim watch. through. Pac had a match on it last week. I kind of skimmed through it, you know? Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's my decision. I'll still take the dynamite. Good stuff. Okay. My next for you. It is Valentine's Day. Or Valentine's Week, like we say. So I always have to throw in one of these little romantic ones. Uh, so you have two options here. You can either go out on a karaoke date with Britt Baker. Or you can go to, this is assuming, we're, these are both assuming life is normal, crowds, all that shit. Uh, so the karaoke date with Britt Baker. Or you can go to the CNE, the exhibition, have all the fun you want there with Penelope Ford. Now, see, is, is Britt Baker known for her karaoke singing? I don't know. I'm just thinking, just 
she seemed like she could have some fun. <laughs> oh, not, give a, okay. not give a fuck. Oh, okay. I was thinking, was there something I missed where yeah, there was a bit no, where she was I just, singing? No, seems like the kind of girl that would go out and have fun singing, not care. I'm trying to think bad. who's a. Uh, are there any? Are there? Is there anyone on the roster who's uh, known for who, 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 who's known for singing? Because yeah, that would certainly be a riot. I love karaoke, so we're gonna have to go with the karaoke <laughs> one for me for sure. Well, there you go. You and Britt Baker. Yeah, I think that'd be a fun time. We can have some fun. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she would get up there. She'd sing some Britney, some Spice Girls. <laughs> All the hits. All the hits. Okay. Ready for your second one here, Mike? We've got... Okay, so would you rather be uh, be tossed out of the Royal Rumble in 10 seconds or mm-hmm. get squashed at WrestleMania in 10 seconds? <laughs> um... Hmm. I guess yeah, it's interesting because, you know, being on WrestleMania is the greater achievement, but 10 seconds is an embarrassing loss. It's, it is. It would be. A la, so a la can, Daniel Bryan however many years ago. Yeah. So 10 seconds, you can hide it in the Rumble. You'll People will forget about it quickly because that happens a lot. But yeah, I mean, hmm. I don't know. The WrestleMania, though, you're still on WrestleMania. You'll always be there forever. So I guess I'll take the WrestleMania. Taking the mania and taking that little pay bump too. Taking that little yeah, uh, you know that bump. Got to take that. That, bump. Ma- Don't just split that it mania ways. bump. Split it two ways instead of thirty ways for that. Good idea. <laughs> okay, my last one for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as of this date, uh, February eleventh, two thousand twenty-one. These are your two options. You can either go another full entire year of no live crowds in wrestling. Or you can have full crowds come back this summer, but they don't come to Canada for two years. <laughs> now this one's actually tough. <laughs> yes, mm. it's personal. It's per- yeah, because it's personal. <laughs> like I want nothing more than for crowds to come back, but I also want nothing more than to be there myself. Yeah, this includes all promotions. All, all promote, yeah, all cross promotions, you know, in the states and Japan and things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to say I'd rather keep it this way for the next year just because I know what I like this. I like this is good. Like, I'm, you know, I'm We're used to it, kind of used to it now, <laughs> um, you know, comfortable with it. And uh, I think, you know, they're, they've also figured out how to make all these things happen across all the, you know, across both or all, all four of the brands rather. Um, everyone does their own little take on it, too. Right. Ends up being a little bit different. And then, you know, at that after that one year mark, they come to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh it's a, it's a tough one. I mean, we already know we're getting some fans at WrestleMania, but we'll go from there. It seemed like there were a the shitload yet. of people there at the Super Bowl. Did you uh did you get that vibe uh, too? <laughs> I think it was a quarter full, like twenty thousand, twenty five. It fe- still feels like it like, or like rather well, there was a there was a ton of cardboard cutouts. Or rather, I was going to say it feels weird seeing 25,000 people in a stadium because you're just like, what? <laughs> like, it, yeah. that almost feels so foreign, right? Yeah, but yeah, it did add atmosphere. It was nice. Yeah, it was great. Okay, Mike, I have one uh, final uh, would you rather here for you. Okay. Would you rather be called up to the main roster and have your first feud against Baron Corbin? <laughs> or would you rather be called up to the main roster and have your first feud against The Miz? Uh, (laughs) that's funny Uh, you know overall I think Miz is the better worker in both aspects on the mic in the ring Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think he'd probably do more for me assuming I'm gonna win assuming Um, you're the baby face coming in hot from NXT (laughs) yeah um yeah I don't know, but I guess if you're a nobody, uh, some people like The Miz. Nobody likes Corbin, so they're going to cheer you over Corbin, probably. Hmm. <laughs> but overall, I think I'd have more fun working with The Miz. I like him more, so I'll choose The Miz. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely going to be liked more by beating Baron Corbin. And at this point, it's <laughs> almost I think it's just a rite of passage, you know? You show up to the main roster, you take on Baron that Corbin, seems to be it. Yeah. you move on, Gatekeeper. he takes on someone else. <laughs> for three weeks and then yeah yeah well i believe that's all we have yeah that was uh that was all this week of would you rather that was a lot of fun yeah always a fun oh. hypothesis hypothetical hypothesizing 
<laughs> let's move on to our Wednesday night war. Um, we do have uh, we're, we're kind of we'll we'll finish off the show with NXT, so we can kind of lead into the uh, into the pay per view right there. So no uh, sense uh, just lingering around. Let's get to some AEW Dynamite. AEW All Elite. They coming for you, Vince. Better watch out. It's too sweet. We have yeah. uh, this Darby Allen Championship match. We've been promised. We've been promised uh, a, a match from the Women's Eliminator Tournament for the uh, for the Women's World Title. Woo woo! And um, of course, where we already know our main event is this big Kenta and Kenny taking on John Moxley and Lance Archer. Yeah, so pretty packed. It seems Dynamite. like a packed episode of Dynamite. Yeah, we just start right off with that TNT title match. Darby Allen defending against Joey Janela. Uh, you know, fun match. These two guys, they're crazy, willing to do anything. But they also did lots of plenty, you know, traditional style wrestling. Lots of submissions. Uh, Janela gets a nice near fall. Uh, but eventually Darby hits the coffin drop, gets a three count, retains his title. I don't remember Joey Janela's hair being that fucking crazy is that just me is that <laughs> like just bushy me and wild. yeah we have it well i mean it feels like uh he like it looks like jungle boys it feels like we haven't seen him on the main roster in months and months and months him and sunny kiss had a little thing going on back yeah, i think earlier he's... in the summer yeah they had like that cinematic thing yeah but yeah he's always there when you want someone to do a job and put up a decent match yeah quick pace around. you know we saw him and taking on it was him and moxley i think like last fighter fest yeah, yeah you kind of put he can go hardcore he can do some crazy shit Exactly, and hopefully this could be a match that maybe gets Joey Janela into this, you know, kind of like a little ro- regular rotation up there on uh, on Dynamite. Yeah, he's always uh, he's never consistent with his booking. He just kind of comes around, disappears, comes around, disappears. Yeah, what's the deal with that? What's the deal with that? Who's booking over there, <laughs> Cody? What's the deal? I don't know. <laughs> but let's go backstage. Sammy Guevara uh, goes into the inner circle locker room and tells them he wants a word alone. With MJF. So Santana and Ortiz check with Max first. They say, we good? Uh, so they leave. Shows a bit of respect, though. They already see MJF as this kind of leader. Checking with him. But Then Wardlow gets up, and MJF says, you too, Wardlow. So he's out. MJF and Sammy are alone. Uh, but Sammy acknowledges the cameraman, right? Yeah. They always feel the need to acknowledge yeah, the Yeah, which is nice. I guess so, but I like sometimes breaking that like... little fourth wall. You know, why the heck not? <laughs> Uh, so they're alone. They're talking. Uh, Sammy says, "I know what you're trying to do. You take over the inner circle." And uh, MJF says, "I third. You know, I thought you were just jealous of me. You used to be the apple, apple of Jericho's eyes." And I walk in, the sex gods die, and all of a sudden I'm the new favorite. But uh, I realize it's more sinister than Jericho. You hate him. Uh, you wish you were front and center. So then Sammy sarcastically says, "Oh yeah, I hate Chris Jericho." And the inner circle. and uh, So anyways, MJF says, thanks, Sammy. And then he picks up his phone to walk off. But Sammy realizes he's been recording him. And then smashes the phone against the wall. Punches MJF in the gut. And walks away. And this is the part that I didn't get. Because if the cameraman's already there, why did he have to record it? Hmm. Well, Sammy, Sammy's always liked his own little... You know, I remember when we used to do like, the cell phone live from In the Ring. And then it would uh, <laughs> pop up. No, there. MJF was recording it though. Oh yeah, I don't know. Just, I don't just know. being a piece of shit. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's just, anyways. Hmm. Uh, he was Sega. Anyways, he wanted to twist Sammy's words around, but the video footage shows that that's not the case. But, anyways, Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson take on Peter Avalon and Cesar Bonini. C- I don't know. This is uh, pretty Bononi? Peter Avalon. Remember that little? Pretty uh, Peter Avalon. They've been giving him this little nickname for some reason. Yeah, he's got the robe. He's got his little bed at ringside. I don't know what that thing is. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, whatever the hell but, that thing is. <laughs> well, it yeah. comes into play. I was also wondering comes why into play later, that would I guess. be there. Yeah, but uh, the match itself, nothing too special. I guess the reason. You have to get Cody on the show. But at the very least, Lee Johnson's the one that gets the pin. So him and Cody uh, get the win. First ever win for Lee. I also Lee I also saw that... Uh, remember that... Um, but that brick shit house guy who took on uh, John Moxley a couple weeks back, but like big hair, big dark hair. It was like uh, two weeks ago. It was him and Moxley. Nick, uh, fuck, 
Anyways, he's in the Nightmare family now too. That's all it was. It was like it was Moxley's first match back after Winter is coming. Okay. If you can uh I can't remember right now. No, you can't remember? Anyways, he was just a big dude with big bushy hair. Anyways, that's all I got. <laughs> all right. Uh Hangman Page is getting interviewed. And when he's done, he exits and he runs into the dark order. And you know, they act like an awkward ex ex lover and all nervous, kinda dopey and Page is just like, hey guys, I'm just headed to the bar to meet with Matt. And like, oh, cool, yeah. That tension, they still want him though, and they he's good for them. Hangman, don't you see it? He'll see it, right? I mean, I guess you'll have to. I think he should join the Dark Order. I think. I don't think so. They need direction. They need a fearless leader. Uh they were cozying up with Wardlow on being the elite. Um, they all they all <laughs> wrote him uh, Valentine's. And uh, he was very respectful and thankful for all of the kind words. So, I don't know. Well, it's nice to be loved. It is, so isn't it, though? Know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Pac takes on Ryan Nemeth, Mr. Ziggler Jr. here. Puts up a good, or not a, yeah, an okay fight, but uh, he's not ready to beat the bastard. So, Pac hits the black arrow and then the brutalizer for the submission win. Yeah. Yeah, the Brutalizer. We still have to make Pac look strong. Uh, so just more of that, you know. Didn't really feel like... There were a couple of matches here on this card this week where not only was there no build-up, there was no stake, and this was kind of one of them. Yeah, yeah, nothing really here yeah. other than I guess they needed something. Needed something. Uh, but then we go backstage. Chris Jericho was being interviewed when Santana and Ortiz run up to tell him that MJF's in the trainer's room. Uh, but then Maxwell comes up as well, and he's got his ribs all taped up, and he says, Sammy sucker punched me. I think you broke my ribs. So Jericho's just like, what? Where's Sammy? Uh, but they don't have time to find him because they got a match right now. So MJF and Jericho taking on the acclaimed, and MJF just fighting through the pain. He's selling the ribs the whole time. Acclaimed looking good. Smooth teamwork, uh, but they're dealing with all the other inner circle members on the outside. Fucking around. There's just there's back. just too many of them at this point. I can't I can't yeah. keep up. <laughs> Sammy wasn't there though. Uh but Aubrey, she's trying her best. At one point she just like kicks them to break the submission hold. And uh later on Jericho goes for the lion salt, but he gets nailed in the head with the boom box by the other member of the claimed on the outside. And Caster covers Chris, but he kicks out at two. Real close call. Uh, but then some more inner circle shenanigans eventually lead to Jericho hitting the Judas effect to get the win for him and MJF. Has any no one's kicked out of that yet, right? I don't think like, so. Nothing I comes think... to no one comes to mind who's kicked out of the yeah. Judas effect. Yeah, when him and Moxley fought, I don't think Moxley kicked out. I think he just beat him. Yeah, I think he never. Uh, I think he never got it in there. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the the inner circle are celebrating the win. When Sammy comes out, uh, Jericho says, what's going on, man? What's the problem? And Sammy says, I told you a couple months ago, if one more thing happened with him, I was done. So I'm out here to tell you, I'm done. So what do you mean? And he says, I mean, I'm done. I quit the inner circle. And then he just lays down the mic and walks off. Jericho's upset. With M- but he's out. He-, he even walked out the babyface exit. He took the babyface right door. Of- yeah, on, on the, yeah, on the other, on the other side on the right- there, you know. Yeah. MJF's so. master plan slowly uh It's working. And I think it's uh you know Sammy Caparis he's a natural born baby face. Yeah. At high yeah, flying. I think it was yeah, almost yeah. Time time we knew that he would have the baby face run. I mean, he is a baby face. Look at his face. He's a baby. He's a little baby. baby. <laughs> he's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but uh this storyline though, I'm still enjoying the the inner breakings of the inner circle. Yeah, you know? yeah. There is too many of them, though. Um, yeah, we got to weed out. We do have to uh, wean some of them out. I mean, I'm still kind of, uh, you know, I think I still wish that. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, the inner circle was actually Santana Ortiz was the uh, was their representatives. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe they'll be the next to leave. Yeah, we can get a different tag team brought in. Possibly. Maybe the acclaimed get brought into the inner inner circle. Oh, too many. This, this is our new NWO <laughs> at this point. I don't know. Yeah, we can't bring it too far. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, it'll just have to break off. Uh, but let's move on to Matt Hardy and Hangman Page just hanging out, getting sloshed at the bar. Uh, but Hardy's not actually taking the drinks. He's pouring them out behind his back. And then he pulls out a contract, Matt Hardy, for uh, Hangman to sign. He proposes, hey, man, we can make millions together. 
uh, and I only want 30% of your earnings. So Hangman's like, sure, you got a pen. So Hardy reaches to grab one, and at the same time, he whispers to the cameraman that the reason he's here is to document the whole thing, have it on record, which, uh, so there again, they're just addressing the cameraman. Well, gotta they don't love, have to do it every gotta time. Love it. I feel like... You like it every time? Sure, I feel like why not? There's always time. a camera guy there and nobody acknowledges them. You think they would at least be like, <laughs> oh shit, somebody's right there looking at me. But I feel like they don't do it in every single backstage segment. Yeah, Sometimes it's only like it's some, there. yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you're just a fly on a wall. But anyways, uh, behind his back, Hangman throws out the contract, pulls out a different one, and then signs it, and then gives it back to Hardy. says, here you go. So Hardy signs it. He's all excited to leave. Not knowing that he's been uh, the old switcheroo. The old switcheroo. What do we think was on the contract? I don't know. Maybe it's like. Uh, you think that was. I don't know. It could be as simple as giving me your money or. Yeah, uh, I wonder. Yeah. I don't know. Could be <laughs> What's weird. on the contract? That'll be our. That's going to be our biggest <laughs> story of 2021, I hope. Yeah. Maybe we can have a contract on a pole match. Contract on a. <laughs> Which is just kind of like a briefcase ladder match, (laughs) (laughs) except it's on a pole. pole. I want hey, if it's if it's if it's (laughs) pullable, I want it pullable. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they just kind of leave this Hardy Hangman thing. Who knows? We don't know what's on the contract, but hopefully, it's just kind of a delay. Yeah, because he's not going to join Hardy. Probably not. He's going to join Dark Order, his true love. Yeah, hopefully, you do that instead. (laughs) Uh, but then we bring out Tony Schiavone. You know what that means. <laughs> uh, it's time for our weekly sting segment, which, you know, we've complained about. And they did the exact same thing. Just entrance. Uh, he talks. T- Team Taz pops up. They talk. Uh, I guess this time they captured Darby Allen, And he was zipped up in a body bag. So they tie it to the back of a car. That old, the him old the Darby Allen body bag trick. See, I think they just shot their <laughs> wad too early on this whole sting thing. Like he could, yeah. He, every week is too much. He could have shown up at Winter Is Coming, and then could have seen nothing, and then come back. But like the every single week he's back, you're just yeah. like come every three weeks. Yeah, exactly. Right, especially I think this pay per view was also pushed. I mean, I guess wasn't this pay per view also pushed back? I think it was supposed to be uh, end of February, but now it's actually beginning of March. I think. So it's yeah, even so he's been back like three months by that. Even point. more time to uh, have to fucking sit through Sting, and you're just like, God damn it! Yeah, it's a lot, you know. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, they pushed it back a week, March seventh. So we're still fuck. We're still a month away from that thing. Because remember how cool it was the first time he came out that entrance? Yeah. And now it's losing them. Now we're no getting the snow feeling. every single week. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel cool. I mean, it's cool, but it's not like you know. If you hear the Undertaker's dong every week, it loses this suspense. Oh, that's why, yeah, we don't want to get that big dong every single week. <laughs> We're never going to get the dong again. Yeah. That was our last well, dong. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. Yeah. But uh, anyway, Sting runs out to hopefully go save his friend from death. Yeah, hopefully he can, But too. if he is dead, at least the police can just pick up the bag. Yeah, at least anything. they don't have to do it. It's not, it doesn't get messy after that. Like, all the blood <laughs> and guts and bones are all just in the bag. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Uh, Layla Hirsch is taking on Thunder Rosa in the first round match in this woman's eliminated tournament. So, uh, you know, I'm happy it's happening on TV, at least the American side. Yeah. We find out the Japanese side's going to be on YouTube. Yeah, I think I saw something like it's on, uh, like, you know, it's filmed with no audience. Yeah. I mean, if they're all over in Japan, they're not going to get them all over here just for this. Exactly. So, four matches on the Japanese side will be on YouTube on Monday, but... This is the American side, so Hirsch, Thunder Rosa, they have a nice little back and forth. Good way to kick off the tourney. Uh, Hirsch, just a powerhouse. She's tiny, she's short, but she's thick, she's well built. Lots of power moves and submissions, but eventually Rosa hits her finisher, gets the win. So she moves on to the second round. I thought this was a fantastic match. We've seen Layla Hirsch like five or four, five times maybe. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, she's super strong and super she can go. Uh, yeah, yeah, real powerful. It was great to see, um, especially in this infamous time slot, to actually yeah. see something good. Yeah, I don't think there was. Maybe there was a commercial break, but if there was, it didn't take too much. Yeah, it didn't or... feel like it. So, and on the yeah, stream, on the stream of a, a dynamite that I watch, I don't know about the stream that you watch, but Jr. will say, "Stick, stick around, picture in picture." And there'll be yeah. like two, and then it just stays. And there'll be like yeah, like two seconds where nobody says anything, and then just they keep doing the commentary. And I'm always like, yeah, is this because like the same for me? Yeah, do I have like this inside, 
the inside scoop I think it's or something? Like, I think it's like if you watch on the Fight TV app, you don't get the commercials. Oh, okay, something, like, something that. like that could make sense, yeah. Yeah, so they still cut to commercial and they just continue on for the people that aren't. Because then sometimes during your feed, you get like three minutes where it's just the AEW logo. Right. And music. Yeah, and it's just... Dan -inch, dan -inch. Yeah, so I think sometimes they don't have stuff to <laughs> film. <but. laughs> or it's just John Moxley's music on repeat. Just... It's a good song. But, uh, it's a good, good song. women's action. Hopefully setting the tone for the rest of this tournament. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. Can't wait for next week's matchup. But let's go to this main event here. We've got the New Japan crossover. Kenta in his first AEW match, teaming up with Kenny Omega to take on Lance Archer and John Moxley in a no DQ Falls Count Anywhere match. And uh, since Kenta's here, he's got his his briefcase that uh, gives him the right to challenge for that US IWGTP title, uh, which Moxley brings out with him for the first time, I think, in AEW. Yeah, we haven't seen it. I was really hoping he would, and I was glad that he did. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, but Kenta smacks everyone around with his briefcase right off the bat. So we just get a bunch of brawling weapons, trash can action. Kenny Omega hits a nice trash can moonsault onto Moxley. Uh, then Archer brings a ladder into ring and hits a big suplex to Kenny onto the ladder. Looks rough. Uh, eventually they fight up to the stage where this is where Peter Avalon's bed comes into play. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know what he was doing, or, but he was just laid out there on his bed, and they get rid of him. Uh, Lance Archer slams Omega, crashes through this bed, which was more than just a mattress. It was like wood under Yeah, Yeah, there was a little, little, little pad down there. There was a whole like <laughs> bed frame down there for Well, it guy. looked more painful than an actual yeah, bed. Yeah, because I, like, I kept waiting. for. I kept, I've been suplexed on plenty of mattresses. <laughs> I was, you. You're waiting for the spot to happen. You're like, okay, hey, someone's, gonna yeah, get, <laughs> once you see someone's the on the bed as soon as they saw it. And then Peter Avalon's just like, no, no. I'm like, hey, it's going to happen. Let's go. Let's get on with it. Yeah, but uh, they move on from there. They fight backstage into the kitchen area. And they just start making a big mess. There's just potatoes everywhere. There's taters being uh, tossed. <laughs> uh, eventually, Moxley and Kenny, they fight back out to the ring. Mox gets a kendo stick, starts nailing him with that. Uh, Kenny fights back, though, lays Moxley out on a table. And in the meantime, uh, Kenta and Archer, they were fighting above them on the stage when Kenta sees Moxley on the table and he just comes flying in. Huge dive off the stage, big double foot stomp. Breaks the table. Breaks Moxley. Yeah, that was uh, a lot of fun. Just so he came <laughs> running cool. in there. Yeah. So then Archer and Omega start going at it. Archer's in control. When the Good Brothers come running out, uh, interference. But it's all legal. So old man Jake Roberts has to jump in, try to help. And he hits a nice clothesline. But then he gets popped in the face, falls down to his knees. And Kenny Omega's ready to hit him with a V-trigger. But thankfully, Moxley jumps in with a barbed wire bat, hits Kenny in the stomach. Uh, then he starts hitting the Good Brothers with the bat. But then Kenta comes in from behind, hits the go to sleep on Moxley. Uh, Archer jumps back in, though. But then Kenta and Kenny just kick him in the balls. And it's four versus one at this point. So they hit a magic killer, a V trigger. And then the three men have to hoist Archer onto Kenny's shoulder so he can hit the one-winged angel. I, as soon as he started picking him up, I just my heart, I'm just like, no way he's going to do this. He that hit it. Would yeah, be it was great. Sick. And of course he did. Uh, one of the biggest moves in sports entertainment. Yeah, all these men with their ties to the IWGP United States Championship, uh, which, um, yeah, was all, was all fine and good. You know, was it the barn burner that it could have been? Probably not. But, hey entertaining fight to the you know where we got things to the point and um i wonder what this you know we this this kenta moxley match yeah when uh do we know when it's happening yet uh i want to say sometime in merch like there's that american north japan show yeah something? yeah new japan strong and i think it's like the new japan strong cup or, or like the new japan cup is yeah something like that Something something, uh, along, something, along those lines. But uh, either way, hopefully this means the door's open for more appearances from the, any New the Japan The door superstar. is open. Ooh, uh, February 26th. So that's actually um, the last weekend of March. Oh, sorry, of February. <laughs> of February. Of February. Uh, well, yes, hopefully this opens the door and leads to the dream match one day. Kenny Omega, Kota Ibushi, title versus title. <sighs> 
Versus title. Versus so title. He's, he's got two titles. <laughs> he's got two titles. Well, he, they, Omega can take two at once. They be, uh, yeah, and so can Kenta if he wants to. You know, he's got that. Imp- you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's all. That's all we know. That's all we know. But yeah, another great episode. Another great episode of Dynamite. Really looking forward to more of this women's uh, tournament action. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that'll be fun. Well, I'll check out the YouTube stuff. Give us an update next uh, week. Of course, please side. do. Please do. And that was our uh, that was the that was the TNT portion of our Wednesday Night War. Let's kick on over to the show with the pay per view this weekend. Of course, we're talking about NXT. NXT. But, um, what does it mean? But, um, I don't know, but, but it's but, good but, wrestling. But, 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 so NXT. But, um, watch and see. But, um, how to tap out a count out but, um, of one, two, three. But, um, but, but, so uh, NXT. Uh, yeah, we've got our own tournament going on on this side of the Wednesday night. Uh, tag team tournament, though. So let's just jump right in with that. MSK taking on Legato Del Fantasma in a semifinal Dusty Rhodes Cup match. Uh, and this was just your nice, you know, fast pace, bunch of double team moves. MSK doing that cool moonsault again where they push the guy mid flip. Mm-hmm. But this time it was to the floor off the apron. Yeah, big one. Even crazy. So lots of nice flippy stuff. These guys are really good. Uh, eventually, MSK hit the up and over to get the win and head to the finals. So MSK just looking hot ever since they debuted. Looking hot. No surprise. I think we saw it coming. You know, I mean, a big signing like this, they're going to make it to, uh, you know, they're going to make it to the finals. I think one of these guys has a one of these guys has a tattoo of the uh, little aliens from Toy Story um, getting plucked <laughs> out cool. by the claw. Uh, you know, they seem like cool guys and they seem like, you know, definitely front runners to win the tournament on the weekend. Yeah, I think, uh, they're my pick. That's for Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. They're certainly, Uh, they're certainly booked like we should be cheering for them. Yeah. And they've got the in ring to back it up. Yeah. The skills. So we'll see. We'll see on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Uh, then we get John Shaw comes out sitting on her throne with Zaya Lee and Boa by her side. Uh, Zaya, uh, she performs a little kata with her sword, uh, and then she gets in the ring. But then Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter come out, try to talk to her. They're both worried, uh, but that bow is just like, get out of here, ladies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, Zaya Lee takes on Cora Jade, but uh, we just get more of this. No fucking around Zaya. Just quick dominating win after hitting that butterfly kick. And then afterwards, she just beats down Cora some more. So uh, Casey yells at her, and or yeah, Caden storms up the ramp towards Tian Sha, and Caden's just like, "Who are you? What did you do to her?" And Zaya grabs Caden from behind and tosses her off the ramp, and then apologizes to Tian Sha, and Tian just lifts a hand, and Boa tries to plead with her, but she chokes him, and lifts the other hand to instruct Zaya, who goes down and beats up Casey. And says, wear a mask. <laughs> yeah, and says, stop hanging out in public. Yeah. See, Tian Shaw's wearing her mask. Yeah, she is. I mean, you know, there's, there, yeah, there's, that's face coverage as far as I'm, that's full <laughs> around the nose and mouth coverage as far as I'm concerned. Let's start, or let's stop dominant victories and have Xylee actually uh, in a match. Because, yeah, you're right. All, I mean, all the pieces are there. Everywhere. We're, we're mean, all hopefully. good to go for a match that with Xylee that's kind of like, you know, 12 minutes. Yeah, well, hopefully this means she's moving up. I mean, Cora Jade's the bottom of the rung. I think Caden and Casey are a rung above her, so hopefully she'll fight one of them <laughs> a next. A slight rung above. Yeah, so beat Casey or Caden, and then uh, then you move on, and then you fight uh, Dakota Kai, maybe, something like that. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good <laughs> idea for me. Uh, but anyways, uh, up next we have The Way coming out, and Gargano's in a wheelchair, and he's got a sling on. He has to be helped around and into the ring, and... He says these injuries are the result of a vicious and cowardly attack by Kushida last week. He's got four fractures in his arm. So, uh, you know, he's unable to defend his title at TakeOver on Sunday. So, But this is obviously a clear embellishment on the part of Johnny. Mm. Uh, but he's so angry, he calls for Kushida suspension. But William Regal's not a dope. He knows what's going on here. He comes out, gets on uh, and tells Johnny, all right, uh, you've we both know that the medical team cleared you yesterday, but uh, you can forfeit the title if you want. Uh, what do you think, Kushida? And then Kushida appears right behind Johnny, and they start fighting. Johnny grabs onto his title, showing that he's perfectly fine. He's not broken. Ah, that son of a bitch. 
Yeah. The match will happen, though. That's good. Yeah. I mean, we've been looking forward to it, I think, for a couple weeks now. Yeah. Uh, but let's go on to some women's Dusty Cup semifinal action here. Ember Moon, Shanti Blackheart against Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae. This was just a good, evenly fought match. Mm -hmm. uh, one crazy spot. Candice was doing all the big spots. She was where she like tight rope walks on the top rope and then jumps and hits a hurricane rana off there to the floor. She was doing lots of fun stuff. Yeah, there. she oh, definitely. It seems like, uh, or in this match, it sort of feels like Candice LeRae, and she does this too. She's like, she's the veteran of the match. Yeah, she's the leader. She she's controls the, the pace, and she's like, she's always done. It feels like she's always done that in all of her matches too. She controls the paces. Yeah, she's the vet. <laughs> she's the vet. She's probably she's like great twenty-seven, but she's probably the vet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she's great. She was hitting moon salts. Uh, eventually, she hits the wicked stepsister, and Indy Hartwell follows up with a big springboard elbow drop looks like they got it in the bag but ember breaks up the pan at the last second and then ember hits the eclipse on candace and shotzi goes to follow up with a senton but indy crawls over top of her to take the bullet but it's a foolish thing to do because indy was the legal woman in the match and that senton that she got hit with allows shotzi to get the three count so shotzi and ember moon move into the finals face dakota kai perfect god yeah I'm happy they will face Dakota Kai and Raquel, which will be a great matchup. Looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, Mike, I think we both picked, you know, got, we're kind of, we were both pushing for Shotzi and Ember Moon to be the champions uh, of this tournament, and uh, they're only one match away. One match away? Hmm. I mean, Raquel and Dakota, though, they have a strong chance Dangerous as well, team. So. Dangerous team. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. And afterwards, we do get the official announcement. Uh, both teams are staring down. As Regal tells us that the winner of the finals will get the trophy along with a shot at the women's tag titles. So thank God. Hopefully those will be coming to NXT. Yeah, because it seems like there's people here who could uh, who want it. You could do one of those. The path you, is there. You could do one of those like open, uh, you know, just kind of, hey, you want it? Come get it. You know, what, what are those called? What's the word I'm looking for here? Open challenge. Yeah, open challenge. Why not? <laughs> fucking sit there. Who wants it? You, you know, is it going to be Ember Shotzi? Is it going to be the way? Is it going to be uh, some kind of Zia Lee team? You know, is it going to be who? The, who knows who it's going to be? Yeah, let's just let them win. Just let them win. <laughs> uh, but then we get Kushida taking on Austin Theory and Johnny Gargano on the outside, causing distractions. But uh, Kushida's not going to lose here, right before his big title match. So. Just a tune-up for him. Uh, he's got Kushida, or he's got Theory locked in the iron bar when Gargano just super kicks him in the face, causing the DQ. So him and Theory beat down Kushida, but then Theory gets dragged under the ring by Dexter Lewis, who, uh, yeah, him and Kushida just lock their submissions in on the way. Yeah, I always forget about Dexter Lewis, the, like, lately. Yeah, he's kind of drifting. He just shows up, scares people, and then yeah, Austin, moves on. Austin Theory, you know, still not British, but getting a lot of exposure every <laughs> uh, every single yeah, week. No, but I Kushida mean, looking like the better, like the better man here. Yeah, well, like I said, right before the title match, you want to keep him strong. Yeah, I agree. I see what you're saying. Uh, but then something new here. We go to the parking lot. Oh my god! Where this? <laughs> I knew you would love. That. Oh my god. <laughs> We go to the parking lot where this really nice looking car pulls up, and by God, it's Cameron yeah! Grimes! <laughs> and this man is looking good. He is all decked out. He's got a fancy, nice brown suit, some glasses, uh, just really nice well, clothes on. He, Still no shirt. He won the shooty for best hair, and he's like, guys, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and he's got no shirt on still to show that great body hair, so... Uh, yeah, man, what's going on? He's got a wad of cash. He's just handing out bills to everyone. He's a baller. Yeah, wh where uh, did this influx of cash come from, uh, <laughs> Cameron? Like, where did you suddenly get a bunch of money? I just want to know. He's got a, you know, he had a big watch on, a little top oh, yeah. hat. He's, He's ready, he was ready to go. He was loving life. Uh, he comes out to the ring, cuts a promo on Timothy Thatcher for being the one that put him out of action. But, you know, in his downtime, he played a bunch of video games. And he found a store called GameStop, and he fell in love. And you know, he invested all his money into it, and he was in the right place at the right time because his stock went to the moon. <laughs> and now he's got so much money, he doesn't know what to do with it. <laughs> and they're making money for dogs now, dog coins. 
and I invested in that, and now I'm even more rich. Wow. <laughs> Cam Cam the, the Cameron Grimes stock market <laughs> explosion. <laughs> and he's just his whole Texas hillbilly, like, yeehaw, just screaming, shouting. He hit oil. He's telling everyone to kiss his grits. He's throwing wads of hundreds on the ground, rolling around in it. I love this new Cameron Grimes. I loved, really I loved, loved the him. old Cameron Grimes. <laughs> I love the old the Cameron one. Grimes. But this came out of nowhere, and it's just so funny. I was laughing my ass off the whole time. Yeah, I. Oh god. I think yeah, I think this is awesome. He's great. Uh, he always has been, and now he's back from injury. You know that that shit's gonna happen. You're gonna get hurt. You're gonna have to come back, and you're gonna make quite an entrance when you come back in. And I love yeah, just like the brown suit. And I'm like, like, cause you buy a suit with the intention to wear a shirt under it. But then, like, to buy a suit and then be like, no, I'm still not going to wear a T-shirt. Like, that's a certain level of balls that's just, uh, like, just fantastic. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you have the shirt and the vest underneath. And the vest, but yeah. He, he was like, he doesn't have time He's for any nothing. of that shit. But I love it. Which I guess is one thing, great. like, if we were to put him on a uh, Triple H level of what you wear, Triple H never did suit jacket, or even Randy Orton has never done pants, jacket, no shirt. This is a, <laughs> this is an entirely new, rev um, big thing. It's a great, I love it. I love the look. Uh, I don't know how long. I feel like he's going to somehow make a foolish mistake and lose all his money. Oh my God. He's going to uh, invest in the wrong thing. That's what happens when you play the stock back. markets, you know? Yeah. But I'll enjoy the ride to the moon and back. Yeehaw. Cameron Grimes. Fun little segment. But we got some cleaning up to do. Our last semifinals match in this Dusty Cup here. Uh, Timothy Thatcher, Tommaso Ciampa taking on the Grizzled Young Vets. Uh, and this was, you know, different style from our first tag match. This was more of your heavy hitting. Uh, Ciampa gets taken out early on, but he comes back in, gets the hot tag, and Starts running wild, but then the grizzled young veterans, they start fighting back. They take out Thatcher on the outside. And then they hit the ticket to Mayhem to Ciampa. And that gets him the win. Wow. A little bit of an upset, I thought. I thought a huge upset. This team, uh, the team of Thatcher and Ciampa, Th Thatcher and Ciampa, sorry, had so much so much heat coming into them. You know, they were such a fantastic babyface comeback team. Yeah. No, I definitely thought they were making it to the finals, so... Uh... Yeah, a bit of a, yeah, definitely an upset, uh, but makes the path more clear, I think, for MSK. Makes the path more clear. I think uh, it's certainly on the main roster of WWE. They haven't quite figured out how to have two baby faces go up against each other. I know it's only been like 40 years, but they'll they'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I guess at its purest form, especially at the end of a tournament, short of having a huge swerve somewhere in the middle, uh yeah, MSK. It seems like they're the clear cut victors. Yeah. Well, let's just get right uh, into it because uh, I think that was the end of the show. Well, they did one thing that was kind of new at the end, where they themselves did a quick rundown of the takeover, and as they were talking, the competitors like came out and posed on the other side of the ramp. Oh, it was like a Street Fighter loading. Yeah, screen. like a Street Fighter loading screen. That was a little bit different. Like this side versus this side. That was yeah. a little bit. That was a little bit different. Because yeah, they're never. <laughs> Dynamite is very good. And I mean, I guess you know, not not meaning to kind of compare two things, or whatever. But Dynamite's very good at telling you what's happening next week. They always yeah, are they sure always to take that little. Next week we got this. Next week we got this. You know, it's very kind of you know, where sometimes you can just start watching Monday Night Raw and end up getting a tables match between Nia Jax and Lana, where your hole starts. Ripping? Do you think her <laughs> hole ripped or like something went up her hole? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if she was trying to be funny or if it was a genuine reaction. I know. We need uh we need Uncle Dave to tell us what actually was the uh was the story there. Well let's just get right into well, let, was, let me give you a quick fun fact because one time in a match Xbox actually did tear his hole. Oh really? His anus was torn and he had to get like stitches. Wow. Ooh, up or down. Yeah. Oh, I don't even want to. He said he once it happened, he felt like he shit his pants, but it was actually just blood coming out of his. That might be too graphic. That is far too graphic. <laughs> <laughs> this show's unrated, right? <laughs> I think it has the little explicit uh, notice on it beside Apple Podcast, so I think that's all good. So let's just roll right into the pay per view that's coming up on the weekend. Of course, we do have NXT Takeover Vengeance Day. Spooky, no that's host, right. right? I don't think no we host, have an uh, explicit uh... host. Which is fine. We don't always need hosts. Sometimes, we, yeah, sometimes we have hosts and sometimes we don't. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, Mike, how about you run us down uh, this card that we have coming up? It's mostly set, I feel like, for uh, you know, for the most part. 
yeah, I think we've got what we've got here. Uh, five matches. We'll start with Johnny Gargano defending North American Championship against Kushida. I want him to uh, lose. Yeah, I think it's Kushida's time. Yeah, which is crazy. You know, Johnny Gargano has had, I think, like four title reigns, like more than anybody in terms of a number of reigns. But it seems like he holds it for a little a little amount of time and then loses it. A little amount of time and loses it. And I <laughs> hope that this is no different. <laughs> a little amount of time. I mean, this time at least he defended it. He he broke that streak. Right, so. against Leon Ruff. Right, yeah. And you can always win it back yeah, later. You can always win it back later. But I think for now <laughs> it's not your time. Yeah, we'll take Kushida. Please. Uh, then we also got the women's NXT Championship match. Io Shirai defending against Tony Storm and Mercedes Martinez. And our the NXT was so packed this week, we didn't even actually get to hear from either of our world champions, or at least not in a like an in not live. Yeah, not live in an in ring. Hey, pay attention now. Kind of yeah. sense. I think we got some backstage like kind of promo footage or something. So that was a little weird. Almost kind of like the show is over. I was like, wait, we still have two belts to talk about here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like this one could go many ways. This one could go either way. Dakota, uh, sorry, Io Shirai has been at the helm of this thing for well, it feels like the entire year Since now. June. Yes, it feels you know it yeah. feels like that was that in your house triple threat. I think it was. Yeah. Um, you know, so it could be her time to lose it, or maybe hell, she's just getting started. I don't know. Yeah, either way, I just want to enjoy a good match, mm -hmm. and I'd really be happy with any winner. So yeah, I'm fine with any. Right and now. triple threat, no DQ. That means she can uh, jump off something. Yeah, if she wants to get inside a garbage can again and do some crazy shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, then we also got the women's Dusty Cup Finals: Dakota Kai, Raquel Gonzalez versus Amber Moon, Shotzi Blackheart. Which we already talked about a bit. Yeah. I'll just give it to Shotzi and Moon. I'd love to see Shotzi uh, and Ember Moon take away with it, mainly because I thought uh, Raquel Gonzalez was going to get a little bit more a push. Didn't she get that pin? Yeah, I thought she was going to be the one fighting uh, Which Eo. is really weird. I thought it would be Raquel, at least Raquel kind of flipping around with Mercedes Martinez, who feels like maybe she came out of nowhere. Yeah. In, Unless uh, maybe they want... <laughs> in this match. Maybe they want their... Their WrestleMania takeover to be Raquel. Yeah, it seemed like she was getting that put that one hand that one armed uh, power bomb was turning into a devastating uh, maneuver. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to see how both these matches play out. They might affect each other. But yeah, I would love to see Shotzi Number take it and then just yeah bring these and then go on to the future and then beat whoever and then win the belt exactly. Bring them to NXT and keep them there. Keep for a long them time. there. <laughs> Uh, and then on the other side of that, we got the men's Dusty Road Classic Finals between MSK and Grizzled Young Vets. And I think we agree on this one as well. MSK should win. It seems pretty clear that uh, these guys will be the team to win. Wesley and Nash Carter. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, who? I mean, hell, they've, they've held on to the PWG uh, Tag Championship for nigh a thousand days now. And this could be a similar run with this NXT Tag, team, tag Championship. Yeah, no, if they're going to win the tournament, I think they should just go on and win the belts as well because Imperium aren't doing a whole lot. So, no. Let them win the belts, MSK. They're young, they're fresh, they're looking good. Let's let them have let it. Let them win. <laughs> and then the final match, which I think will probably be the main event uh, the NXT Championship, Finn Balor defending against Pete Dunne in what should just be a good banger of a Peter match. Peter Dune. Yeah. Peter Dune. Yeah, this is going to be a fan. I feel like it'll be. This will be a great one. Uh, yeah. Go either way, too. Yeah, it'll be like their Kyle O'Reilly match, I feel. Just a lot of rough, tough kicks to the head. And yeah, you know, Pete Dunne could pull off the win here. Who knows? And this was another week that we didn't see, uh, or sorry, rather, you know, out of all the things we did not see this week, you know, Karrion Cross, also one of them. Uh, I think there was like a little vignette. Yeah, backstage. but I mean, you know, like I didn't even like the it, in so person. You know, he's in the ring. He's making shit happen. Because uh, yeah. he seems like you know when he when he I when mean, he came back, he wanted to start making shit happen. Well, now he wants Escobar for whatever reason. For some reason, uh, Escobar's like, dude, I don't even know you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who the fuck you are, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I guess I mean if he's coming, if he's at all going to come back for this title. Uh, who's who's it gonna land on when he gets it? 
I don't know. We're still owed uh, Finn Balor versus Walter at some point. And we're point. still earned. Oh, yeah. We're owed. The, you owe us that. You owe me. You owe me, Trips. I pay your salary. I own your house. Hunter, you <laughs> owe me. Yeah. Uh, but, but that was uh, the whole card. It's going to be one hell of a show. Um, these kind of short and succinct NXT takeovers are always the talk of the town. Yeah. Fun fact about this takeover. What's that? This is the first one. Ever since the Undisputed Era debuted, where not a single member is on the card. Wow, God! If you like want to talk dom, if you want to talk dominance, <laughs> I we oh. didn't see, we didn't see. I don't think we saw a single Undisputed Era member on the the show this week either. No, which is isn't in that crazy? Yeah, we're uh, we we just spent, you know, we wa- the whole sh- the show was fantastic, and neither champion was on it. The big former champion was on it. Not a single Undisputed Era member. Uh, you know what this show did? What? Pretty much every single thing led to something about the pay per view. It was, it was oh my god! This was show. one of the best go home shows that you every every single thing <laughs> was pertinent. No bullshit. The second our truth and the gaggle run through an episode of <laughs> NXT, I'm done. I'm turning off my TV, oh god. and that's uh, and the podcast <laughs> is over because I refuse. Uh, I would refuse at that point, but it's going to be one hell of a show. I think either way. Yeah. I'm looking forward to watching it. Let's get to our final segment for the show. Of course, you know what we're talking about. We are talking about the wrestler of the week. It's the wrestler of the week. Of the week. The wrestler of the week. Of the week. Of the week. The wrestler of the week. Of the week. Of the week. The wrestler of the week. Of the week. Mike, I'm going to toss it your way for this week. Uh, it was a bit tough. It's a bit tough. Mm-hmm. There was a couple of great appearances. Uh, I guess it's down to two. It's down to two. But you know what? The one has a chance to win it on Sunday, so I'll save it for them for then. I'll give this week's wrestler of the week because I had such a good time with them. I'm going to give it to Cameron Grimes. Yeehaw! <laughs> For that big return. A big return. He's got glasses now. He's such a cool dude. Cameron Grimes is a future Hall of Famer. Um, <laughs> I, I bet Cameron Grimes is more likely to make it to the MLB Hall of Fame than Pete Rose is. Uh, <laughs> So is Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is more likely to make it to the MLB Hall of Fame than Pete Rose. Isn't that sad? Uh, You and I are more likely to make it to the MLB Hall of Fame than than Pete Rose. R.I.P. Pete Rose. I'm going to give mine this week. um, Like, Mike, we kind of addressed it earlier on in the show. Uh... We've all been there, too, where, like, you're at a party, you're with a group of friends, whatever it is, and you say something that you think is hilarious. Mm -hmm. But maybe it just doesn't land, you know, or (laughs) the intention was there, but the execution fell a little bit flat, or maybe it was just the wrong crowd, uh, and you just pray that everyone just forgets that it happened. But I will never forget (laughs) Nia Jax screaming about her hole. (laughs) <laughs> I will never forget. Um, so many things have happened from the COVID two era that I will truly never forget about professional wrestling, and I think this is actually going to be one of them. Uh, you know, it's uh, Raw Underground and Nia Jax's hole are the two biggest takeaways for me in the last year of professional wrestling. Uh, you're the wrestler of the week. That has to be a first for her, right? Um, it uh, for probably yeah for Nia. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Who yeah, yeah. Nobody. Uh, but I mean, my hole. It's legendary. My hole. That's one of the legendary uh, wrestler shoutouts. I can't think of one yeah. that's you know that has more success. I heard she got like offers from Tushy and stuff right after. Oh, just to use the sound. Just to use the sound clip of my hole. <laughs> yeah, like hey, we'll give you bidets. And- Ooh, that, I I mean, never. You can't. Don't say no to a free a free bidet. Never. I wouldn't say no. I would never say no to a free bidet. <laughs> but there you go. That was it. Uh, that was it. Rest of the week. <laughs> that was the podcast. Uh, rate, review, like, subscribe. Because of course, Vengeance Day is coming up this weekend, so you're gonna want to watch it. Because uh, it, yeah, it really is shaping up to be one hell of a show. And then we have uh, the Chamber and then Revolution. So this feels like remember two year two falls ago 
when we were going to Saudi and we were having takeovers <laughs> and then fucking yeah. AEW started. This that really crazy October. It's going to be great. a crazy next few weeks between uh, Vengeance Day, Chamber, and then uh, Revolution. And then before you know it, I feel like the next weekend's going to be Fastlane. And then the next weekend is Mania. <laughs> and then before you know it, we are uh, doing our final uh, WrestleMania predictions. Well, uh, that's it. That's it. Thanks for listening, folks. Uh, we'll see you next week. Mike, take care of yourself. <laughs>